Hi guys, it is your friendly neighborhood handbanger Terry here. And I have a little bit of a new setup, thanks to my husband, who got me um, a tripod to help with filming. And I have a mic, so I'm going to try not to scream at you guys. I don't know if I am or not. Uh, you can tell me later. And I have a light, which I'm staring into and has now blinded me. But um, one thing I've noticed is that it certainly um, helps with wrinkles and that sort of thing. So um, no filter, which is kind of cool. So yay, look at me. All right. I did a um, poll on Facebook about whether you guys would rather talk about how Southerners visit or paparazzi uh, ring show and tell. Southerners won, but paparazzi ring show and tell is coming up. So we're going to talk about how visits are conducted in the South. Now, in, by, when I say in the South, of course, that's the lower um, right quadrant of the United States. Uh, and apparently it includes some states that I didn't know were included, like Oklahoma. I'm sorry, no. Oklahoma is not part of the South. You, Midwest, you can have Oklahoma. It's, it's perfectly fine. We give it to you free. Um, of course, Texas is considered part of the South, but then again, Texas has kind of always done its own thing. I mean, let's not forget it was its own country for a while. Uh, and then we just don't know what to do with, with Florida. Um, Florida is just, uh, I don't know. I mean, technically it is Southern, but I'm just not sure how things are done there. Uh, a lot of people that live in Florida aren't originally from Florida, so I don't know. Anyway, moving on. I myself am from the Southern Appalachians, which means that I am from the part of the South that uh, entails southeast, uh, Southeastern Kentucky, Southwest Virginia, Northeast Tennessee, and Western North Carolina. And we have kind of a specific sort of accent. It's kind of twangy, it's kind of hillbilly. We are basically what you would call the hillbilly portion of the South. And uh, if you listen to Scottish and Irish accents, you'll actually hear some of our accent in it because we all, I don't know that we all are, but the great majority of us are of uh, Scotch-Irish descent. So the rules that I'm giving you for how to visit another Southerner are basically what would happen in the area I grew up in, but I think they largely carry throughout the South. Okay, so we'll start with what needs to happen before the visit. Before the visit, you will need to be invited. You do not just show up at someone's house without calling. Uh, in the South, uh, appropriate application of manners is huge. Uh, if you grew up with a sort of a Southern lady like I did, I learned all of the things that you do and don't uh, to make yourself a, a good Southern woman. And one of them is that you don't just show up at someone's house. Um, there are lots of reasons for this, but the main one is if you just show up at someone's house, they did not have time to clean and they did not have time to make something like a, a snack or that sort of thing. And if Southerners cannot offer you food that they have prepared, then they just do not know what to do with themselves. Uh, my husband was more or less amazed at the number of times that my mother offered him food. And he kept saying no, she kept offering, he kept saying no, and she kept offering. And finally I was just like, dude, just take the food. You don't even have to eat it. Just pick at it. But she's not going to stop till you take the food because... Then, it, it, up until that point, she has not fulfilled her, her duties as a hostess. And it's just going to go on throughout the night if you don't take some food. So, anyway, you do not show up without being invited. You don't show up without calling. Okay? So, let's assume that you and your southern friend have decided on a day and a time that you're going to visit. Okay? Again, back to politeness, Southerners are always on time, maybe a little late. We do take things slow in the South, but we are never like 30 minutes late. We are also not 30 minutes early because, again, you have to give your hostess time to have everything just right. Or your host, probably your hostess though. I don't think Southern men are big into the... Uh, 
the manners involving southern visitation. They just usually go hunting or in my husband's case you get ushered down to his study aka his man cave and shown you know all of his manly stuff. Anyway so now you're there. You're knocking on the door. It's eh, maybe five ten till and she's you know by this time your hostess is expecting you. She opens the door and you're ready for your greeting and your greeting is hey if you're happy, which you should be if you're coming for a visit, if you're not, fake it. You know, but yeah, hey, if Southerners talk about something that is not happy and is solemn or, you know, that kind of thing, then it comes out like this, hey. Now that means that something's happening and you need to talk about something serious. Um, hopefully that's not gonna be happening on your visit with your Southern friend. So, hey. And the next thing that comes out of your mouth is, how you doing? So it's, hey, how you doing? It's not hi or hello. We just don't do hi or hello. It's just, hey, I don't know why. I don't make the rules. So anyway, how you doing? The correct answer at this point, when you've just arrived, the correct answer is fine. So, hey, how you doing? Fine. And then you follow up. If you're the person that says fine, you say, how about you? Or how are you doing? And the other person will say, fine, because this is just the visit. This is just the beginning of the visit. I mean, we just don't want to go whole, whole hog just right off the bat and start talking about all, all the stuff going on in our lives. So, you say fine even if your arm is hanging by a tendon and you're on fire. You say fine. This is also true if you just see someone in the grocery store. And, hey, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Fine. That's, yeah, you don't have time for any more than that, so everybody is fine, okay? But this is a visit. So, you sit down, you just, you probably just need to make some sort of comment about the house. Oh my goodness, your house is just so lovely. How do you keep everything so straight and clean? I don't care if there is a hog running through the living room. That is what you're supposed to say, okay? Very, very big on politeness in the South. Very big. If we're going to talk about somebody, we're going to be nice and do it behind their back. But we're not, at, we're not going to say it just straight to them. I know, I know, that was a joke. Anyway... So you make some comment about how nice the house looks, that kind of thing. Then your hostess is going to ask you if you would like a little snack or a little something to eat. And my husband can tell you, just say yes. They have gone to trouble to make something or go out and get something, um, you know. Now, here's a little aside note. If you have a dietary restriction, you really, really need to say this beforehand because pretty much all Southern snacks are full of gluten, full of sugar, and full of fat. That's how we know that we've given you something you can enjoy because let's face it, all the things we enjoy in life are full of gluten, sugar, and fat. You can say that they're not, but no, you're, you're just, you, no, you're lying. Because let's face it, nothing, nothing beats a really good warm apple danish or a really good apple fritter. Let, let's just, let's just be real about that. So, if you have dietary restrictions, you need to let your host know that ahead of time because she is not going to offer you celery. It's just not going to happen. Also, drink-wise, you're probably going to get something like sweet tea or coffee. Uh, you might get a Coke, and by the way, in the South, every dark carbonated beverage is a Coke. If you want something other than a Coke, then you're going to need to specify, or if you want an actual Coke. If you say Coca-Cola, then they'll give you an actual Coca-Cola. But many things can be referred to as Coke, so you're going to need to name it by name if you have a favorite. Uh, you might, if you ask for water, you'll get water, but your hostess will feel like she has failed you in some way. You should have had something besides water. Um, so anyway, there are a number of things that you might be, uh, might be offered. If none of those appeal to you, if you need some sort of diet drink or something, best just to bring your own. Now, I have diet sodas at my house, but I 
and I've noticed kind of an odd one out among my friends. A lot of my friends do not like diet soda. That's about all I drink. Um, so, you know, uh, I've been told more than once to BYOB, bring, bring my own soda. So, okay, we are in the house. We are having our, um, our dessert, our snack, whatever. Uh, of course, of course you have complimented her on it and you have asked her for the recipe. Doesn't matter if you ever cook it or not. You're just gonna ask her for the recipe because it makes her feel good. If she bought it from somewhere else, like a grocery store or something, she'll probably tell you at that point. Uh, that would always be true in my case because I hate cooking. So if you like the apple fritters, in my case, you can thank Ingalls because, which is a local grocery store, um, or or something because I, very, I most assuredly did not cook them. Anyway, so you've complimented that. Now, our next thing to move on to is we need to ask about the family. Family is hugely important. Well, I'm sure in, in all parts of America, but hugely important in the South. And one of the things that we really value is how your parents are doing. But we don't say, how are your parents? We say, how's your mom and them? Now, mom and them is not a thing. Mom and them is a contraction, much like y'all is, for mom and then. How's your mom and them, meaning the rest of your family. So, how's your mom and them? The South is very matriarchal. Um, I think a lot of people think that the South is a uh, good old boys patriarchy type thing. And in some ways it is. Um, for a lot of families, it is the, the, the husband that goes out and does the work. That's the way it is in, in my family. But the running of the home, the scheduling of vacations, the getting kids where they need to be back and forth, that is a mom thing. And... Um, my mom had said more than one time that if she ever just fell over dead, my father would not know what to do with anything. He didn't know when the bills were due. He didn't know any of our school schedules. He didn't know when I needed to be at the school for band practice. Nothing. He knew nothing except I go to work, I make the money, and I drive us to church on Sunday. But, yeah. So, the South is fairly, uh, it, it is a matriarchal society in a lot of ways, especially with the running of the home. So, how's your mom and them? That's why mom comes first. Because if mom ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, as the old Southern saying goes. And it's probably said in other parts of the country, too, because surely the rest of the country has figured this out. Anyway, this is the time of the visit when you don't have to say fine. This is the time when you can say how everybody's doing. You can talk about Uncle Bob's gallbladder surgery. You can talk about your cousin's broken foot. You can talk about the things that are happening in your family, um, you know. And of course, the, the thing that the other person will say is, oh my gosh, bless your heart. Now, bless your heart is a loaded phrase in the South. Bless your heart in that sense really does mean bless your heart. I'm sorry your family's dealing with that. If you hear something like, oh, he just doesn't. He is, if he had a brain, it'd rattle like a peanut in a boxcar. Bless his heart. That just that, that basically translates to you idiot. Uh, you might hear, oh, bless his little pee-picking heart or Lord love him. These are all nice southern ways of saying that you're a moron. But if you do hear, oh, bless your heart, like that, in that, you really are, the person really is saying to you that they are sorry for what you're going through and that they really wish things were better for you. Uh, these are important distinctions to learn so that you know whether or not you're being insulted in the South. We're very good at insulting people and at making it sound really nice. So, anyway, so you talk about things that are going on in your family, you talk... The, your hostess talks about what's going on in her family. You guys get the 411 on who's sick, on who's not doing well, who's getting divorced, who's running around with who. Okay, yes, now we've segued over into gossip. I would love to tell you that Southern visits and meetups don't include gossip, but that is just a lie. It's absolutely a lie. If you have seen Steel Magnolias, you know that's a lie. There is always going to be some gossip about somebody. Who's doing what? Who's seeing who? Who's sleeping with whom? Who's got fired from their job? Blah, 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 blah. So, yeah, there will be some gossip. Um, you know, if 
if you're a, a good person, you won't spread it any further than where you heard it. Uh, but there probably will be some gossip. So there's that. Now, there will come a point after all this when you can really answer how you doing. Now this completely depends on who your southern friend is. If they are one of your best friends that you've known for your entire life, you can actually tell them how you're doing. You can tell them I'm dealing with a little depression or I'm a little bit anxious about this whole COVID thing or you know this 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 and this has happened. I've been quarantined with my family and I want to kill them all with an axe. You know, if basically you can say what you need to say at that point if you know this person really well. If you don't know this person that this well and you're just sort of, you know, getting to know them, then you can say things like, eh, my arthritis has been acting up a little bit, or, yeah, you know, allergies have really been kind of rough this year, that kind of thing. The kind of thing that they could just go, oh, you know, and, and pat you on the knee and tell you, oh, my goodness, well, I will certainly be thinking about you. But, you know, you don't want to burden people that you don't know that well with the going on of your life, you know. So... Anyway, um, now, after you've done all this and you've eaten the snack and you've complimented and you've asked for the recipe and you've talked about your family and you've gossiped a little bit and talked about yourselves, um, it, you know, quite a bit of time may have passed at this point. Generally speaking, you don't want to stay for more than about an hour and a half to two hours. Your hostess has a life, and oddly enough, it is not you. Um, you know, so they might need to go pick up the kids. They might need to go pick up dry cleaning. They might need to run it through you loads of clothes through the washer. You know, so they, ha they have things that they need to do, and you don't want to stay forever. So, hour and a half, two hours, about that, you know, about that length of time. And then you'll say, well... This has been wonderful, but I really need to get going, or I should probably get going. Then they will say, no, stay, because that's what they're supposed to say. This is not an invitation to stay. This is for you to say, no, you know, I wish I could, but I really got to get going. You know, we'll have to do this again soon. And they'll say, yes, yes, we will. Oh, this was just so much fun. You're going to be heading to the door as you do this. Then you're going to say something that you don't mean literally. You're going to say, y'all come see us. Now, you don't mean that you want them to come see you like literally that night or something. We all know, what did we learn? The first thing we learned was you don't show up unannounced. You don't show up without calling. So, y'all come see us means you call me and we will meet together at a prearranged day and time so that I will have time to either cook something, go get something, which would be me, and clean the house. So yeah, y'all come see us is just a nicety that says, we would love to have you come visit us, but please follow the appropriate Southern rules. All right, so I want you to think back, if you are Southern, I want you to think back on this now, and I want you to particularly think of your parents and think of, you know, is this the way you saw things go? Is this the way you grew up hearing things? Because it was very much the way I grew up hearing things. Um, my mom would have people over to visit. She would bake a cake. Uh, you know, I and my sister, well, usually my sister was at school. I was about four years younger than her, but I was meant to go play with something, you know, while they were able to talk and gossip and talk about, you know, their family and their aches and pains or whatever. But I do remember when the person left, I always heard, y'all come see us. And that was true when people would visit my grandparents' house when I was there. When they left, they would always say, y'all come see us. And, you know, I just remember that. But, of course, that didn't mean to just get in the car and go down there that night and come see them. So, let's go through. We start out with not showing up. We, we make, you know, we arrange the visit. It's like a doctor's appointment. You don't just show up and say, here, see me. So you do that because you give your hostess time to get something to eat and to take care of the house. Then your greeting is, hey, how you doing? And of course the answer is, what is it? Fine. It's always fine. It, like I said, you could be on fire. It's fine. Okay. You get in the house, you sit down, you'll be offered something to eat. Take it. Just make everybody's life better and take it. Then you talk about your family, and then you gossip, then you talk about yourself a little bit, then it's time to go, y'all come see us, but not really, until you, you know, arrange it, boom. 
as they'd say up north, bada bing, bada boom. We do not say that down south. Um, we would say, good deal, or yep, or something like that. Anyway, so, I hope that if you are not Southern, you are now ready to visit your Southern friend. If you don't have a Southern friend, you should make one because we're awesome. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was a little bit of a, um, a test for me because uh, I have lighting on me. My husband got me an awesome set. I've got a microphone, lighting, all this fun stuff. So I don't really know how this, you know, I'm, I'm going to have to look at it to see how it turns out. Uh, I get a, I have a bad habit of looking up at the light and then, you know, having my retina burn out. So I'm going to try to quit learning to do that or try to quit learn not to do that rather. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I got my first vaccine shot earlier this week. I also lost my wallet while doing it, but hey, you know, balance. <laughs> not dying of a deadly disease, not having my driver's license. Eh, it's okay. So anyway, I, um, will be having my second shot in the middle of April, and my daughter went with me to take the first shot. She took it too, and we will both be having it in April. And my cats are fighting with each other. What else is new? So, if you have not gotten your vaccine yet, um, I hope that you're able to get it soon. Uh, remember that even though you have your vaccine, you still have to uh, wear your mask because you might have it and not know it since you're protected from it and pass it to someone else. All right, guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, I will see you in the next video, which will be a paparazzi ring show and tell. So some of you guys may want to check out for that one. That's okay. I understand. If you like this content and you enjoy it, please feel free to subscribe and hit the little notification bell below. Um, you know, tell your friends if you like it and maybe they can watch and subscribe as well. And I hope you guys have a good rest of the evening. Bye.